Wellington fishing guide Pete Lamb knows how to get into a little bit of off-road mischief. And this little trek is designed to land us into the back of beyond and catch the very elusive blue mokey. When you know how to handle your vehicle, and you combine four-wheel drive territory with fishing territory, then you have a perfect match. On a blustery Wellington evening with a Norwest cloud pattern setting up a glorious sunset, the fishing was always going to be a bonus. Blue Moki are hard to catch, fight like soldiers and are superb to eat. Here is our hunt for the elusive Blue Moki. I hope you enjoyed the drive to the coast near Wainui Yamata as much as we did, it was fantastic. We joined land-based game fishing expert Pete Lamb on the beach for the Great Moki Hunt. And I say the Great Moki Hunt because we have done this before, twice, and never caught one. And Pete this time has become desperate. The man is using crayfish, I mean serious good fresh crayfish, but bait. Have a look at this. I've put about 15 kilos of kinnaburley in so far, so we've got another 15 kilos in the bin for, for later on. And uh, the fresh cray, you can't go wrong. So what are the best baits for Moki? Well, I've got them right here actually. Crayfish and mussel. The green lip mussel. And the old crayfish, chop the tail off. Mate, there are people that are watching this that would think that green lip mussel and crayfish for bait is sacrilege. Well, which is what I think too, just quietly. I get a lot more pleasure catching two or three mokey than sitting down eating a cray, so uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. So your annual crayfish quota gets given to the mokey and therefore yeah. you get to, to catch what you like? Pretty much so. It's a secret weapon for fishing tough times, competitions, you know, when you want to outfish all your mates, that kind of stuff, you can work miracles on cray. I've been outfished numerous times with fresh cray, that's why I've changed to it. And, Worth the, worth the money. But Good quite, investment. Is it quite soft? Very soft. It just, it's just like goo. It just falls off the, off well, the hook. Well, how do you get to keep it on the hook? Well, you've got to use just, I use standard cotton um, because it soaks the cray juice into it. And once you've lost your bait, you've still got cray tasting cotton left on your hook. And I've caught many a moki just on cotton. Now, look, don't wave your hands around too much, otherwise the cameraman won't be able to follow it. But just show <laughs> the viewers what you're doing there. Well, you just you don't even tie any knots. You just start wrapping the cotton around. The, the bait, and you just want a big blob of bait on just, your hook. Just hold it up so the viewers can have a wee look. There it is. See, we're not lying, he is using crayfish for bait. It's damn good stuff too. He's even putting clothing on it, he's dressing his crayfish up. Yeah, I use about a metre, about a metre on each bait. You just go for it. And uh, it's very soft, once the fish grabs it, it's all on. No, no turning back. We'll bring you back on the Moki. Go to it, Lambo. All right. There's a classic old hunting cliche that says if you're throwing up lead in the air you're going to hit something. And a few years ago when I fished with Pete for the first time I called him two rods because every time he'd put lines in the water he would have to have two. Well today he's gone one better, he's got three, so it's three rods today. We've got old Jeff at the end of the beach fishing one, Kim's been banished to the vehicle and Pete's got three rods. Oh, I've got the fourth one to put out now. i got four, sorry. Desperation. Four rods. This I've got to see. Kelpie! Woo! Yeah, beauty. We are Kelpie hunting, Pete, aren't we? Yeah. Awesome. Kelpie safaris. How's the it feel? Bears and parrotfish. Great, eh? These things, they chaps. change sex halfway through the life, don't they? Kelpies, parrotfish. Mokey hunters do too, don't they, Pete? When are you do no, the operation? I was going to say, um, TV presenters do, don't they? <laughs> Oh well, we're gonna live another day. Oh yeah, that's that's a lovely way of releasing your fish. You've got to let them go nicely. Oh okay. If you are going to release a fish, try to do it with as much care as possible. The high altitude aerial release is not recommended. One fish that was not going to be released was the hapless Moki, and this one 
happens to be a very good fish. In the guts and channels around the Wellington and Kaikoura coasts, I have spearfished my share of moki, but catching them on rod and reel is a very serious angling challenge. The trick is, apparently, not to fish too far out, just 20 or 30 metres behind a surf break. Hooks are generally only one or two bar O, and these fish don't always hit hard. The answer? is to strike at everything. Pete uses 15 kilo line and 12 foot surf rods complete with free spool reels. The legal size is 45 centimetres and this one is a good legal fish. Moki can be caught from the Bay of Plenty south, although very few anglers are serious about targeting them. It is well worth the effort both from the sporting and culinary point of view. Moki hunting is kind of laid back and a rising tide with the evening change of light can produce a garnish to your day in the form of a breathtaking evening sky. In that situation, life ain't half bad.